got this on the barge bite, I believe. The barge just entered the lock. <laughs> Got it, baby. Uh, bait saver hooks, jug fishing reel with my own custom design jug that has so much drag on it that he couldn't pull it. And that's that jugs by Burt hook. It caught him pretty well, but it's mangled the uh, it's mangled the uh, wire that's on it. I didn't think I had caught anything on it, but there we have it. Right, he could not pull that under. I just saw it. All right, we're chunking these and we're converting to these. Got another one on the jugs by Burt. Guy. When you, some people like to de-slime them first, and you're gonna take the fillet knife like so. You're not gonna lose much meat this way, but this is the way I do it. You may think you're losing some meat, but not really. You're gonna come down along that backbone, and I just come all the way down like so. All the way out like that. That's the front half. It's usually easier on this side for me. It's just a lot of people like to use an electric blade with this. That's the only way I do catfish now is just fillet them. Even the, like the really small ones that seem like they're too small to fillet. Take some, oh, come on. You just gotta have a sharp fillet knife and this is not the, I'm not the best at this as some people. Some people are just, pros at this I'm not and this guy goes in the so we can come back here you can trim off some of that red meat if you want because they're not all that great These little twigs here will start catching on, then you can get some bigger pieces. We got two of the outside pieces are a little bigger, but uh, sometimes with the leaves like this, they'll burn so stinking fast that uh, nothing else will catch on before it goes out, and you end up having to keep adding more and more leaves. And I mean, it's cold, but not not you know, it's Alabama cold, which is not really cold, right? And while that's going, you get you some more little twigs like that, a little thicker still, you know. Pecan wood, got it from my mom. Uh, log there, put a bigger log there, so we got a nice square there. Now uh, we're going old school, fellas. Skill is gonna be way too hot, fellas, but just pan frying, yeah, it's way too hot. And put it on a cooler part of the little stove here. Welcome to the catfish kitchen, by the way. We got some catfish fillets. They've already been seasoned and, and cut. I think we'll go get the other skillet and show you how to make some bannock bread. All right, so you want to take these. You want to... Uh, Filet catfish by cutting that red meat out. You can't eat that red meat. And so it ends up being some nice little, almost chicken finger sized filets. And so, um, and that, you see that skillet is nice and hot. Really too hot. So we're actually taking the skillet off the fire, believe it or not. And that's how you control your fire. You, you have a, that's really hot, that's on the fire, and that's kind of off the fire, so you can kind of regulate the temperature manually that way, okay? A lot of coals in there right now, exactly what we want. Small skillet for the bannock bread, get it going, get it hot. All right, so bannock, bannock bread. A cup of flour, thereabouts. 
a little bit of salt, about that much salt. Uh, we're gonna put some gluten in it. I'd rather have glue, that stuff that holds my food together. If you're gluten-free, don't do this, but if you're gluten-free, you wouldn't be using flour and all that kind of stuff anyway. So about uh, uh, half a teaspoon of gluten in it. Then I whisk it here. I don't ever sift my flour. No, I just whisk it with a whisk, and that's just that does just as well. This is corn syrup. It's not. It's just regular old corn syrup. Uh, you can use maple. You can use whatever syrup you have. You can even just put sugar in it. I just put about a tablespoon in there, and that's about enough for. All right. And about the same measure of oil. Okay, not like that. All right, mix that up a little bit. Add water until you get a cookie dough-like consistency. That's close. Maybe another teaspoon or so. That was about a tablespoon, but we can make do. We got two important ingredients. You can either put cinnamon, clove, stuff like that in there. Whatever your favorite spices are. I put a little clove there and a little pinch of allspice in it. Give it a little autumn-like flavor. And that's about the consistency you want. Now that you got that on there, you're going to take your bannock bread and just put it right down in there. And it's, it's right in there. I mean, you're just going to mash it down. You know the skillet's hot because the bread's, bread's cooking. Mash it down as much as you can, but got protein, carbohydrate, and I guess we got some salad in the house. We can eat that for our vegetables, and that'll be a nice, healthy meal. So, all right, at some point, you gotta turn the meat here, and it should be uh, nice and blackened. All right, and it's actually better than it is on the stove in the house, man. Fairly well. May look gross to you, but that side there, that more golden brown on that side had a little bit more oil on it. What's the verdict? Let's try the carrots first. Let's see. I need to grow some Chantonet carrots. That is. It smells smoked. <laughs> it's just weird. Apparently I don't worry about having food in my mouth. Not as much sugar as like a donut or something, but it's got a little sweet to it. It's got a lot of dessert-like flavor in it because of the, the allspice and the clove. And you can use uh, cinnamon, things like that to make it give you the illusion that it's sweet when it's really just, it's not very sweet at all. These came out beautiful. That red of the chili pepper with the Paprika, great. You cannot eat something better than this out of a out of a store. It just it doesn't exist. <laughs> Open fire, pecan wood, oak, smoked. Even though it was in the skillet, it pick, it picks up some of that smoked flavor. The thing I like about this is in the house the meat. I don't like moist meat I want it dry and putting it on a low fire like this outside it almost dehydrates it a lot more which is what I much prefer I mean after working in a restaurant for 10 years oh you want the meat to be <laughs> really overcooked try that that's uh, I don't know what we're gonna call this recipe but uh, if you're interested I'm gonna I'm putting together a new book on teachable called how to cook fish I found an old book written in 1908 that has hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of fish recipes. I'll take this recipe and put in it, but uh, I'll put that up on Teachable. I'll give you guys a link and you can go check that out and I will talk to you guys later. I'm going to eat and I'm going to play some games.